This reality shows how sexual harassment can affect public transit riders. It is a widespread problem that reduces people's perception of safety on transit, deters them from using it, and reduces their mobility freedom. Sexual harassment can take different forms in public transit. Physical, such as groping or brushing without consent. Verbal, such as catcalling or making unwanted sexual comments. And nonverbal, such as stalking or sexual gestures. In Canada, 32% of women and 18% of men have experienced unwanted sexual behavior in public space. Meanwhile, a survey in the United States revealed that 48% of transgender responders were mistreated, verbally harassed, or physically attacked because of their gender expression in public space. It is impossible to know the exact numbers for different transit agencies because reporting is very low and many agencies do not gather this kind of data. So how come sexual harassment is so common in public transit? Here are three main reasons why perpetrators are likely to act. Harassers act because they do not think that the act will be traced back to them. They do not know the victim, the encounters are brief, and it's easy to get away from the scene in a public and crowded space. In overcrowded spaces, the harasser can go undetected. The same goes in poorly lit spaces. The emptiness of remote stops and spaces late at night also make the harasser feel like they will not be stopped, as well as a lack of surveillance. Most importantly, the harasser feels like there will be no retribution for their actions. Sexual harassment is gravely underreported, bystanders rarely step in, there are no quick systems in place to respond to a situation, and the legal consequences are not made clear to the harassers. So what can be done? Around the world, transit agencies have been exploring many options to address this problem. They have increased surveillance, improved station and stop design, mainly increasing visibility, created reporting apps and hotlines, and broad awareness campaigns. However, not all solutions are appropriate for all contacts. Transit agencies must commit to collecting data which is severely lacking on sexual harassment in order to document the issue and monitor the actions being taken. In Montreal, the SCM's strategic plan does not highlight sexual harassment in transit as a priority. An app to facilitate reporting has been in the air for several years, but still no action has been taken. The SCM must start measuring sexual harassment and implement appropriate measures to change the conditions within their control. Beyond what the SCM can do, we also collectively need to be part of the solution. We need to change the culture that allows sexual harassment to be tolerated in public transit. Let's get informed, be aware of how our own actions contribute to this culture, and call out inappropriate behavior when we see it.